What's going on, everybody? RC Pilot Will here, and today we're going to be going over my uh, setups for the Freewing F15. I'm sorry, F14. <laughs> I looked over at my F15 over there. Uh, going over the setups for the Freewing F14 2064 Tomcat, and we are going to, like I said, go through these setups. So I'm gonna break this up in in timestamps, um, so you guys could jump the parts if if you want, because um, this is a lot to cover. So um, I'm gonna break it up in the timestamps for you guys. But without further ado, let's get into it. Um, using an eight channel receiver in this plane, um, so eight channels is gonna be definitely a requirement. Um, if you're running AS3X, you're going to need at least 10 channels. Uh, well, you're going to need at least a 10 channel transmitter. If you're running AS3X, you're going to need at least a 10 channel transmitter. If you're running an 8 channel transmitter and no gyro, no AS3X, none of that stuff, um, then you can get by with running the. Um, eight channel transmitter with an eight channel receiver and you can get the most of what I got going on here because um, as right now I'm currently not using a gyro so um, the, the board has been bypassed um, it's been completely removed so um, for as far as the lights control I'm using a free wing blue box to control the lights and the gear sequence if you guys notice my gear doors are not open because they're on the two stage which you can get away with this and that closes the gear doors with the gears uh, extended so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the transmitter and I'll um, I'll put the transmitter up here on the screen and I also uh, have the tail of the bird facing us so we can see the controls as they're being done and um, and so you know what we got going on here. Alright. Alright guys, so here we are, we got tail of the plane facing us and everything's powered on. So we're gonna go through this. Um you know just how I got it. We're gonna go straight down my mixing list. Um just like how it shows up here on my transmitter. All right, so coming from my home screen, um, we got to skip over some of this stuff. I'm going to skip over some of this stuff because you guys already know I use 150% rates. Y'all know I use the 71% on the Expo. Um, you already know about gear lock. If you don't, if you haven't um, seen any of this stuff before, um, I'll put a link down in the description for my F15 setup that kind of talks about this because this uh, F14 has got a lot that we got to go through. So I'm not going to um, go through a whole lot of that on here. So we're going to jump over to the mixing. So we're going to go to our model adjust and go to mixing. And I named everything on here. Um, so and I'll explain to you some of it. You might not understand what I got going on, but um, I definitely will explain what I got going on here. So first thing on the list we have is a variable wing. So the variable wing is a combo switch mixing that is going to allow me to move the wings between three certain degrees other than full extended and full swept so if I fully sweep the wings which that full extent right now and I get the full sweep but when I'm in the variable sweep which let's go ahead and open up the menu there so you can see how I got it set up if I go into the variable sweep um, Wings 44. well it won't go into the variable sweep right now because I also have a safety 
um, basically a safety lockout for that to keeps it from going into variable sweep while the gear is down. So first I'm going to have to lock my gear, gear locked. and then I'm going to have to retract my gear. Variable sweep. And you see it went into variable sweep. So using this slider, so yeah, you probably do need more than a 10 channel transmitter for some of this stuff. But so this is going to be definitely something on higher than a 10 channel um, transmitter. So I'm able to pull it off with a 12 and it's kind of maxing me out. So with the slider, you're going to be able to wings 56. go to 56 degrees, wings 44. 44 degrees wings 32 and 32 degrees these are all three different degrees within the um, full swept which is 68 wing swept and full extent which is wings extended. 20 degrees so um, this is gonna do everything in between that 20 and 68 wings degrees 32. So I'm at 32 wings degrees, 44, 44 degrees, wings 56. 56 degrees. And if you look here on my screen, you'll see how I have that set up. Um, I have my uh, left uh, slider wheel that says LLV, um, commanding AS3, AX Auxiliary 3. Um, but I'm running the rates uh, between. 35, positive 35, positive 51 percent. So I have this on a combo switch, and the reason why I got this on a combo switch, the switch type is combo, it's G and A. So G and A will have to be in these positions in order to give me the status. So A being my landing gear, my landing gear will have to be at um, full retract and then I have to have uh, switch G in position 1 which gives me the option for the variable sweep if my landing gear is not gear there extended. my gear automatically uh, not my gear if my landing gear if I for some reason put down my landing gear or if I'm still on the, the runway getting ready for takeoff and it's sitting in variable sweep, which you see G is still in position one, then I end up with um, the wings fully extended. So the wings will fully extend and I won't have any uh, problems or anything like the, with the, uh, the wings trying to come back while I'm trying to take off or the wings staying swept in a position while I'm trying to come in for landing, this prevents that from happening. So this is like a safety measure. Um, doing it in a combo, instead of just putting it on a switch and you have to hit multiple switches. Um, so say for instance, if I'm flying along retracted. and I'm in variable sweep and I got it, you know, um, at Wings 56. 56 degrees and I decide to Oh, you know, I gotta come in for a landing real quick. Well, as soon as I extended. drop the gear, the wings are gonna come all the way out, and then I'll be able to also have extended access wing to, required. to flaps, which you just heard that just now, because I'm not in variable sweep. I'm still in variable sweep. I have to extended wing required. I have to put it wings in extended wings extended to get my flaps. Now they only pop fast like that because I did it after the fact. Flaps retracted. But the flaps do flaps 15. move at a slower pace. Flaps retracted. Instead of just popping right out like that. They don't just pop right out like that. So <clears throat> that's one of the things that I have there, which is the variable wing sweep. Um, you guys have any questions about that, you can always um, hit me up in the comments or you can shoot me an email whatever and um, I can try to explain it a little bit more to you um, but for the most part that's basically about it you just want to mix your slider to 
your um, whatever auxiliary switch you have the wing sweep on which mine is on auxiliary three and that will that will um fix that problem because my g switch is my wing my wing sweep switch and my a switch is my gear switch for landing gear all right so let's back on out and now we're going to go to talking about our flat trim. So a big thing that's going on is flat mixing, flat the elevator mixing. Um, the flat ele flat the F elevator trim, which is what you see here, is stands for flat to elevator trim. Um, I have that on a trim tab on my transmitter, my left trim tab on the transmitter. Uh, let's show you real quick what that is. So that is this right here, not the the basic trim tabs there. So that's what that is. So we're gonna go into this and as you can already see before we get in there it's set to switch c so basically i just have the left trim tab um commanding the right elevator so this is the thing you want to you want to remember right elevator does when you're mixing and you're mixing in a right elevator it's gonna make the elevator for the left follow suit so if you're pitching it down, it's going to pitch it down. If you're pitching it up, it's going to pitch it up. If you do whatever mixing into left elevator, it's going to give you opposite effect like tailorons. So you want to do right elevator so that you don't get that opposite effect. Um, pretty cut and dry. It's on switch C and it's only on landing flaps. I don't have it set for takeoff Flap flaps. 15 to trim so that's my takeoff flaps which is 15 degrees flaps 25 and that's my 25 degrees flaps which is my landing so if we watch my elevator and I pull the elevator trim tab towards me representing pulling the stick back you Flap see um, minus 52 you see I'm getting and you can even see it on my monitor too Flap where, mix six. Flap mix 62. Flap mix 0. So this will allow me to do an elevator to flap mix while in flight to get the best feeling out of my flaps. Um, so I could do this instead of fighting the plane. Um, of course, this is, this is what I did early on in the video. I put it on. I turned on the flaps to see what it felt like. It kind of it kind of pushed down, but it didn't push down hard, so I just kind of left it alone. I didn't do any trimming on it. Now I could push on the stick or push on the uh, trim tab to give me a little bit of uh, I'm sorry, pull on the trim tab to give me a little bit of up elevator. Um, that way I can um, smoothen it out even more and try to make it level flight, but. And I, it was doing fine. Um, I probably will mess with it some some eventually. I'll keep you guys posted on that. But other than that, it doesn't doesn't do any of that outside Flaps of that. 25. So let's say you do trim it, okay? Flap mix minus thirty two. Let's say you do trim it, and let's say you trim it there. So here's the sweet thing about having the the trimming on the fly. So, first of all, so let's go ahead and get this out of the way. If I go to my takeoff flaps, flaps 15. that trimming goes away. Flaps 25. But here's the sweet thing about that. If you look at the monitor, you can see where I moved the elevators to. And you see the amount of elevator uh, trim I gave it. Now, if you do this correctly and you do it hands off, and you see how it does with the flaps on hands off, you can land the plane and look at what you have set, what the elevator, the right elevator and the left elevator 
I'll add which is a positive 31 and negative 31 on the left elevator and you can adjust your trim uh, your elevator mix in flaps so that it does this for you um, so you don't have to worry about going back and so you're basically trimming it it's just a a temporary use it's not something for permanent use you might need to you know retrim it or whatnot afterwards then you can always go back and retrim it or whatnot afterwards but you to use this for temporary use get the plane down set it on the flap setting just like that take it back up try it out but make sure you zero out the elevator trim the elevator trim the mix for elevator trim you want to zero that back out so basically you want to flap mix flap mix zero you want to mix that back to zero after taking it and putting the the um, elevator mix into the um, actual flaps settings so that that can that comes in handy um, for just you know, like I said trimming it on the fly and you can get it all trimmed out on the fly or whatnot get your elevator mix to get right with it so you get a nice um, predictable smooth uh, transition and you don't have something surprising you all right jumping back out we're going to go down to we have what I call an aileron lock so aileron lock is basically a locking of the ailerons so we're going to flaps retract the flaps alright aileron lock happens on a G switch and what aileron lock does is it locks the ailerons on the wings but it doesn't lock the mix for tailorons. Tailorons is on a mix. I'm not using tailoron setting in the transmitter. I'm using um, one aileron, one flap, two elevators, one rudder. That's what I'm using on here. Um, if you are using a gyro, you would need to go about uh, initializing this differently. I did say I was going to do a video on that with the um, SC27 and show you guys how I did that. I'm pretty sure there's other videos out there that's done it. Uh, I actually learned it from two brothers myself. So, um, so yeah, so it's just something I'm just, uh, it's not something I originated with them on that part. It's something I learned from him. So, aileron lock, moving on. So, as you can see, I have aileron movement and let's see a gears lock. Let's put this gear retracted. Alright. So gears lock, gear retracted. So you see I have my full movement of ailerons right now. But with an aileron to aileron mix of a negative one hundred percent to a negative one hundred percent. And when I put the G switch in to uh into position two I'm sorry into position two and I I'll sweep the wings back Wing switch. notice those ailerons are not moving on those wings but now I have tailorons on all at once on one click wings, wings extended one click Wing switch. I went from wings extended having roll authority on the main wings Wing switch. to have a roll authority on the tail. All in one switch. So, which there's another mix that makes that happen as well. That makes the tailorons come on as well. And that's going to be also on the G channel. Um, but I'm able to lock those ailerons so I don't have that weird effect that everybody's been talking about um, where the ailerons are moving with the uh, with the wing sweep so that locks that just like that by putting that on your wing channel your wing switch 
and making it for when wings are swept back that you lock the ailerons. Now your aileron stick is still gonna control the mixing because the mixing is separate from the actual aileron movement. So that's gonna lock up the ailerons on the chant on the RX side, not on the um, TX side. So that's how that does that. So I'm trying to run through this kind of quick guys, but I'm not trying to go too quick because I don't want y'all to, um, if you're trying to figure, you know, catch on to this, I want you to be able to catch on to it. So like I said, this is all gonna be um, sectioned off. So you can just go back and, um, and look it over again. Um, and it's, this is not in the actual particular order that it should be in, but this is the order I have it in. So, next one is force wing out. All right, just like I said earlier, um, and I think I showed you guys, yeah, I did. With the wings being swept, if I gotta come in for a landing pretty quick, my gear is set to push my auxiliary three, which is my wing switch. My gear is set. Gear extended. To push that out. Gear unlocked. Hang on a second. What am I in? Okay, so yeah, it's a combo switch of. Okay. Wings 56. G being in, in, uh, in, uh, Wings variable. 56. Variable. Variable suite. So, if I'm in variable suite. Wings for wing sweat. If I'm in full sweep, it's not going to do it. Full sweep, I have to do it myself. But if I'm in Wings variable 44. sweep, then. Gear retracted. Gear extended. Whoa, almost messed up, guys. Gear locked. Lock that gear. Gear retracted. So, um, if I'm in variable sweep, and I'm flying along and I gotta drop the gear, then it just automatically opens the gear up for me. And I mean, it opens the wings up for me and open up the gear. It automatically opens up the wings and I have my wing authority. Now, I want you to see that just now because uh, this is something I want y'all to notice. You're probably thinking, oh, well, if you're in a in a wing gear swept retracted. position, your tail is on. Wings 44. And you're in the wing swept position. Wings 44. Yeah, but at the same time, when I do do that, gear extended. I don't lose the tail runs. So I still got control with the tail runs, and you see I got slightly aileron movement as well. That's another mix I'll show you guys about the Low aileron movement in variable sweep because of the fact that variable sweep can go out a good little distance. I can't afford to use some aileron on the on the wings on the main wings, so I can afford to use those. And it doesn't they don't come all the way in, so I can still use them versus them being all the way back which they're right over top of the elevators at that point. So I did do that to um, Wings 32. make it basically as a fail safe. So if I'm in variable sweep and I drop the gear, I got my wings coming out. But for the most part, I remember to sweep my wings out regardless anyway, so that I don't have that problem. And I don't have that to worry about. Just go ahead and have the wings swept out. And I just bring the plane in as, as it should be. So it's a gear to a Zero Eighty Three, which is your wing gear and your wing sweep. And you want to mix. Um, you basically just want to do 100% because the whole point is to make the landing gear push 
the wings um, to a point. So now here's another thing about that. If you want the landing gear to push the wings to a point, you want to make sure that when you're doing these mixing, mixings, that you're not making. Gear retracted. Gear extended. Let's see. Gear retracted. Wing 32. You want to make sure that it's not. Gear extended. Pushing too hard. So it's going to push out, but it's not going to push too hard. Wings extended. So my wings stop at 150% um, of travel because I, I wanted there was more travel I could give it and I wanted to achieve that 20 degrees. So I adjusted them to 150% for full sweep out or for full extent. And for sweeping them back, I adjusted to 100. The wings are not locked into the all the way back position. Um, that gives them that keeps them from being uh, just too much under a load with all of the the wind and stuff um they they're back but they're not they're not pinned up against the other phone so i don't want the servo to be thinking that it didn't make its travel as hard as it needs to make it so it needs to keep pushing and burn up a servo and then uh you know end up with a one wing sweep because uh, on the wing out sweep, you know, so I try to keep them where they're just going to be wings extended just right before they get to their lock positions where they got just a little bit of movement. I mean, you think about these other foam jets, these wings are moving when they're flying. I've watched that MiG-29 over there in the corner on the other side. I've watched the wings literally flex on that thing. So they're moving to a point. It's foam, you know, you're not going to stop it. It's not like a balsa plane where it's, you know, got a lot of rigidity, a lot of rigidity and it's, you know, it's good and strong. So you're going to have some movement, you know. The mix is a combo switch. It's a combo switch to so switch G um, being in the variable sweep position Wings 32. and switch A, which is my landing gear. Landing gear being retracted. Variable tweet. I'm sorry, landing gear being deployed. Gear extended. And that, that automatically pushes the gear, pushes the wings out. So that the wings come out. And you see the status is currently on, so that's gonna be that setup. Remember these combos are and not or. There is an option for or. If you do or it's just gonna let you do it for either switch that you decide to hit. It's not gonna do it for um the mixture of the two switches being in the combination that they need to be in to um either make something happen or prevent something from happening. Jumping back out. We did the force lock out, the force wing out. Now we got a flap lock. So flap lock, which is I'm pretty sure everybody's wondering about. How do you stop your flaps from accidentally triggering? Same way I did with my ailerons to keep them from triggering. Except it's a little bit more tricky. Because flaps for some reason doesn't like to um it doesn't like to sit solid. So I can basically lock the flaps by well, the wings swept on um, any two of these positions on G position one or position two on G with uh, the wings in a sweep if I put on the flaps mixing 108 negative on my flaps basically keeps my flaps from moving so if you watch my flaps in the monitor extended wing required they barely move, but I'm also getting a call out telling me that I need to extend the wings. So um, this call out is going to happen. Extended every, wing required. It's going to happen every ten seconds. Extended wing required. And no matter which one of these I hit. Extended wing required. It's going to tell me I need to extend the wings if I want flaps. Flaps retracted. Uh, but at that point, what I would do is I would put it in the retract mode. Wings extended. I would extend my wings. Flaps 15. And now I got my flaps. Flaps 25. 
flaps 15. So the question is, what if you got the flaps on? You forgot to turn the flaps off and you go to sweep the wings in. Well, Wing there you go. The mix automatically kicks in immediately and the flaps are removed. Extended and the wings, required. wings sweep back. The ailerons are locked. Tail lines are automatically on. All of this happened just now Extended in the flip of required. one switch. Of course, on the way coming out, it's a little, uh, a little cringy. Uh, I wish there was a way I could slow down mixing, but obviously I can't. I can't slow down mixing. I can't delay it. So if you got the flaps on and you throw the wings out, it's going to be a little cringy. Yeah. It's going to, yeah. Flaps retracted. It's not going to like it. I mean, it, it'll tolerate it, but it's not going to like it. Okay. So I hope you guys caught that. And we're going to move right along. I'm a little tired. But remember, that is a flat to flat mix. And you're going to mix in enough of your command for flaps to... Um, you're going to mix in enough opposite command of flaps. That's what you're doing there with that 108. You're mixing enough opposite command of it to prevent it from moving into your flat position. I advise that you do go back and double check the, the throw for the flap after putting that mix in. Make sure that the throw is correct and you, um, you don't have that you know, any big deals to worry about with that. So, we did the flat lock. You guys know what gear lock is all about. Um, gear lock is what I, I did put up on the uh, F15 one, the F15 video. You're gonna jump back over to that one. You'll be able to see how gear lock is done. We're gonna focus mainly on things for the F14 at this time and so the next one is Teleron's Teleron wing extended okay so Teleron's wing extended that means I can have the wings extended Tailrons. and basically have Teleron's with the wings extended let's see here it gives a lot Gear retracted I have Teleron's with the wings extended. And also on top of that, I want you to notice that I have limited uh, aileron travel. Turn Teleron's off. Tail normal. And I got a lot of aileron travel. Tailrons. So the Teleron's are traveling just like I want them to. They're getting a lot on the, on the authority. And by the way, you're not going to get this much out of your elevator with the stock um, servo horn. The servo horn that comes on there is not going to give you that much out of your elevator. You will not get that much. You're going to need to put a new servo horn, three wing servo horns on them. And um, I think the furthest you can go out is the fourth hole on the servo horn. And that will give you more more throw. You can also, if you want, on the control horn, you can also move that on the end one hole. This has two. You can move it in one and get you even more, but uh, I, I'll take some resolution on the control side. So, um, basically, that's what that is. And Teleron's, let's see here, Teleron's with the wings extended. It's on a combo switch. And like I said before, when you mix something into left elevator, it gives you this type of movement. They go opposite of each other. So when you mix into right elevator, which is what I did with the flat, um, flat to elevator trim, they, give the, they follow each other. They don't oppose each other, they follow each other. So, I did a 50% mix um, 
in there. And I probably want to bump that up a little bit, but I have a 50% mix in there. Um, because of the fact that I do have some aileron authority, so I, I don't necessarily want to have um, a lot of tailorons along with the ailerons. I mean, it's going to give me more than what the ailerons would give me by themselves, and more than what the tailorons would give me by themselves, because I have four surfaces that are working against the uh, the fuselage of the plane. So. 50% in that mix, positive on both ends. Let you guys see what that looks like. And you see how it's moving on my monitor. So that's how that works on that. It is on a combo switch for this model. It is on a combo switch for this model. Um, the G switch, which is my wing switch, has to be in wings fully extended. And I can be in either one of these two positions on F. Um, the second position on F, and I'll show you, gives me what I would have if I didn't limit the ailerons on the wings, which gives me full aileron travel on the wings. So now if I really want to, you know, corkscrew this thing, I can't. But for the most part, I'm looking for smoothness and responsibility and responsibility and response <laughs> so that's uh that's where i'm gonna go with that so that's why i'm gonna keep that at all right so it's a combo switch like i said g your wing switch being in fully extent and f uh which is your tailoron switch would which would be in um or uh, whatever switch you would use to switch on tailorons that's what you would want to do there. Um, you want to put it in position one or position two, or both position one and position two, or whatever positions you got available for whatever switch you're using. Um, and that will turn on your tail lines. As you can see here, if I turn it off, tail normal. my tail went back to normal. I got my full aileron through. Everything came right back. So, moving along, and I think the next thing we're going to come across is a uh, tail around wing sweep. So, tail around wing sweep, you guys already seen that. Tail around wing sweep is just simple, uh, switch of, a simple flick of switch G, which is my wing switch. It's going to be an aileron mix to left elevator. This one's going at 90%, so I'm getting more out of it. So let's see, let's show you guys. Uh, I got that up, gears locked. So in a normal wing configuration, you can see in the the roll to the left here, if I go wing swept, wing swept immediately the tailorons took over what the ailerons was doing and with much more authority than in just regular tailorons mode with the wings extended. So I'll show you guys that here too. So tailrons. Tailrons activated, but I'm also in wing sweep, right? Let's let's start from the beginning. Wings extended. Wings out. Alright. Sorry guys, I'm fighting with my uh boxer over here. So wings out. I'm in a roll to the right, okay, with tailorons on, and I swept the wings. Wing swept. You notice the tailorons kicked even, even more. The ailerons are completely gone. Wings 32, wing swept, wings extended. Wing swept. Even in my variable state. Wings 32. In my variable state, I got very little aileron movement in my variable state. My tailorons are 90%. But when I go to the wings out, wings my tail around is only doing 50% because I have that much more movement of the um, of the ailerons as well. So that's basically compensating for that. Not making the tail do all of the work. The tail is doing more of the work, 
Um, just like in the actual real models actually do, the tailorons do do most of the work. Um, they, they, they take on the movements sooner than, or more travel quicker than the ailerons do. So that's how that goes. Buddy, get down. I'm trying to see the video for the people. All right. All right. So let's see here. So that's that's ailerons on wing sweep. That's just simply gonna be on channel G, which is my wings channel, and it's gonna allow me to get tailorons whenever I go to variable sweep, ninety percent tailorons or in full wing sweep. I get ninety percent tailorons. So um, ninety percent of the hundred and fifty percent travel. So that's what that is. 90% of the 150% travel. Not that if you do just 100%, you won't see that much. 100% travel, you won't see that much. You actually literally get 90% of 100%. So that sounds like a lot. I hope I didn't sound crazy saying that like that. But that's Teleron Wayne Sweep, okay? Um, basically giving me tailorons on the wing sweep. Next thing gonna be, guys, okay, so we're almost at the bottom. We got what? We did tailoron wing sweep. We got two more mixes to look at. <laughs> we're, we're cranking in at about 40 minutes right now on <laughs> just mixings. So, um, next one is low aileron to tailoron mix. So that's what I was showing you guys on the variable suite, how I got the low aileron um, to tailoron mix. Hang on a second. I, I think I skipped one. I think I skipped one. Uh, all right, aileron variable sweep. Okay, so aileron variable sweep. That's the switch G. That's gonna give me my ailerons that you saw um, moving at such a low, a little amount when I'm in variable sweep. So variable sweep. That's what's giving me that little bit of aileron movement that you see right there. If you're watching that right aileron, as long as the screen doesn't flip it when it's recording. If you're watching the left aileron, I'm sorry, the left aileron, you'll see that it's just slightly moving. So that's where that's coming from. So if you um, just want to mix it in aileron to aileron as if though you're trying to lock the ailerons, because the aileron to aileron mixing cuts down the actual ailerons. It doesn't cut down the mixing of tailorons because tailorons is on a um, on a mix. So it just, like I said, it doesn't cut the TX, it cuts the RX side of things. So you, um, you just basically want to take the aileron to aileron and you want to dial it back by pushing it down 70%, 60%, whatever you feel. I went with 70% because I'm getting 90% um, on the 90% of 150% rates on the uh, tail. So I want um, additional, what is it? If I'm doing a hundred percent, okay, dang, I, I messed up my math, guys. I'm sorry. I had it in my head, and, and like I said, my box is sitting here fighting my hand. Um, so that's another thirty percent. Basically, that's left lingering behind. Um, actually, no more than thirty percent because it goes to one hundred and twenty-five on these rates, but um, that's like more so like. 55%. So you got another 55% lingering around um, that's usable, but 
the 25, I don't think that 25 actually does anything, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. When you hit that 100, that's about it. Because the, to lock the ailerons is 100% to 100%, now 125% to 125%. So, uh, so it, really, I'm only left with another 30%. On top of that, so if I got 90% on my on my tail rods, and I got 30% uh, on my ailerons, well, that gives me a good bit of stop, buddy. That gives me a good bit of travel there, um, coming in at 120%. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, if if the math is correct, if the math is like that, it's probably not that simple, but. About a hundred, I, I would look at it like a hundred and twenty percent of total authority use um, between the two. So, a hundred and twenty percent of authority use going on there, um, of a hundred and fifty percent throw. So, that's still going to be more than anything out the box. That's going to be more than you know um, using the standard tailoron setup on the transmitter that's going to be more than using the standard tailoron setup that the, the mixing board gives you plus you already moved the you changed the servo horns so you definitely got a lot more kit going on there so yeah i hope i got oh excuse me i hope i said that all correctly if i didn't then message me comment me something and um if you know the correct math on the <laughs> percentage of stuff like that please don't hesitate put it in the comments but do it in a nice way i clearly made it said that i don't think it's just that simple math um i'm no aerophysics physicist 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 uh might be saying that wrong too but I do kind of think that, you know, hey, this is out of work, like such and such. I do know that once I get it in the air and I fly it, what it's doing when I'm flying it. On my third flight, I found that it, it actually performs pretty good. Um, wish I had got that on camera for you guys, but if it's not on camera, it didn't happen, right? All right, so uh, moving along to the last one. <laughs> which is low aileron to tailorons. So um, this is basically just basically means I'm getting a low amount of aileron movement when I got tailorons on with the wings extended. It's a it's a combination switch of switch F being in position one and switch G being in wings fully <laughs> extended which you guys saw my tail rods on earlier with wings fully extended. So this is giving me 50% of 150%, which would be about 75% <laughs> of throw um, in the tail. And in the L run, I'm getting 50%. Oh, 150% throws on the ailerons, on the main wings. So I'm getting 75% of the travel on the tailorons, and I'm getting 75% um, of the travel on the ailerons because I use 150% rates. So, um, basically just kind of half and half on that one. And that's going to increase the roll authority. I can make it janky, so it'll be easy. That can make it janky. If you yank it, it's going to yank it. And so I would, I would definitely advise being a little easy on that um, because it'll, it'll push around pretty good. That's where that expo is going to be coming in at, the 75% expo. Um, I'm sorry, seventy-one percent expo because the gear is up. I'm in. I'm in my basically my normal rates, high rates, whichever one you want to call it, because I use gear-based rates. So my rates only going to go down 
when I put down my gear. And you see my rates decreased when I put down the gear. But when the gear is gear up, my rates increase. So it's a combination switch of F um, and G. So um, F being in position switch one and G being in position switch zero, which is wings fully extended. Um, F in position one gives me tail lines option. Um, I did notice F position two is not highlighted. Okay, yeah, F position two is not highlighted because if I had highlighted it, it would limit the aileron throw. And this is what it looks like when you got 75% of your travel on your tail and 150% of your travel on your ailerons. So this is 150 aileron, 75 tail. Tail runs. 75 aileron, 75 tail. I'll take the 75 tail, 75 aerons. Because I can tell you right now, this sucker right here yanks. <laughs> so, um, I mean, if you like that, if you want to go for it, go for it. But fully disclosure and um, put a disclaimer out there. If you crash this plane or any plane you know, based on the setup I told you, it's not because of the setup. It's completely because of your lack of control or you either didn't do something correctly on your side or um, or whatever the case may be. I'm not responsible for anything that should go wrong. Um, you know, with your, your jet, your EDF jet, um, using the setups that I'm showing you, so just giving that, putting that out there, there go that disclaimer, um, use these settings at your own risk. All right, so that kind of puts that in perspective there. So we're basically, basically done with the mixing guys. Um, we got through all the mixing. <laughs> it's 12 mixes that this, this, uh, IX-12 can do, not including the, the rudder, the aileron, and all that stuff, but there's 12 custom mixes it can do, and I've used 10 of them. I've never used that many mixings in, in my whole entire time of mixing anything ever. I mean, even the Sukhoi didn't use that much, and I did flapperons, and air brake, tailorons, um, auto air break, all that good stuff. I did all that stuff on there. And didn't even use, I think I might have used six. But to use 10, man. But guys, I've been rolling on this for 50 minutes now. And I am tired. T setting this plane up took a lot of work. Um, it, I don't want to say it probably took me about two and a half, three hours. Um, this was, this, this is the ARF version that I purchased. So being this an ARF, that means I had to put on my own, um, ESC. I had to put my own, um, EDFs in it. Um, of course the receiver, I pulled the mixing board out slash gyro and I put a free wing blue box in there. Plus I had to set it up, the basic stuff on the transmitter, which I kind of preset some of it before the bird even arrived to try to give me a little head start. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a long night into the morning uh, with this one. And for a 64 millimeter, this thing's actually pretty good in size. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll give you guys a size comparison here. I'll put it up against the, uh, against the F-15. Give you guys a size comparison. So you can see what it looks like. Take it 
to keep it fair guys i lined it up with the two of them uh the tail ends so you see here i tried to put the very ends of the tail this one's a little off but very ends of the tails together just to try to keep it fair um so this jet is much closer to me let's tell you what let me stand in front and there we go ignore my feet let's back them up out of there and you can see here just how much further the f-15 comes out past the um f-14 not much further i give or take maybe five to six inches difference and the F-15 we know is a 90 millimeter uh, EDF. Now, in terms of wingspan, I'm pretty sure the F-14 got it beat with the wingspan because it's definitely gonna have wingspan. Um, definitely wouldn't compare this to a twin 80 F-14. Um, that would be the same as comparing it to a MiG-29. A 280 MiG 29. That that would be ridiculous, you know. So I wouldn't compare it to that. But yeah, you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope I was able to um, help you guys out. Um, if you can, you know, help me out by hitting that like button. Um, if you're new to the channel and you into RC stuff. Um, hit the subscribe i also do some stuff with the cars so not a whole lot but every now and then you see me with the cars hey right, guys i'm gonna get on out of here rc power will out